There's a lot of hype about the health benefits of NMN in humans, but what does the latest science say? Stick around to find out. And be sure to watch to the end of this video to get my take on this study, suggestions for future human NMN studies, and my and Dr. David Sinclair's personal NMN regimen. A recently published clinical trial of endurance runners found that the nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide plus or NAD plus precursor nicotinamide mononucleotide or NMN increases several measures of aerobic capacity. 40 men and eight women endurance runners between the ages of 27 and 50 in China were recruited for the study. For six weeks, participants took either a placebo or 150 mg, 300 mg, or 600 mg of powdered NMN twice per day, once in the morning and once at lunch or in the afternoon prior to a training run. In general, at peak effort, most measures were unchanged with NMN supplementation, such as VO2 max, which is the maximum rate of oxygen consumption measured during incremental exercise, that is, exercise of increasing intensity, maximum heart rate, and peak power. However, subjects showed a dose-dependent improvement of fitness at more moderate effort of the first ventilatory threshold, or VT1. For example, at VT1, subjects who took 600 mg of NMN twice per day had higher VO2 and lower heart rates compared to the lower doses in placebo. Although there was no NMN-only group to compare to, it seems likely from previous studies that such a group would have been outperformed by the exercise groups. With this assumption, it can be concluded that the two interventions have a synergistic effect. The double-blind placebo-controlled study design as well as the dose-dependent relationship provide a lot of confidence that NMN truly was responsible for the improvements seen in these subjects. While these results are encouraging, this was only a small study. Subjects were only followed for six weeks, were exclusively Chinese, young or middle-aged, healthy, and regular but amateur runners. NMN has shown sex-dependent effects in previous studies, but there were not enough female participants to do a separate statistical analysis. So we need much longer-term studies with many more people with a wider age and health range included to build on these results. Also, Dr. David Sinclair has said many times, including in his book Lifespan, that he takes 1,000 milligrams of NMM every morning shaken into his homemade yogurt. This is also the dose that I take just about every morning, and I believe it's benefiting my health, but I obviously don't know for sure, and I'm certainly not recommending that you take NMM. I've also heard sources I deem credible state that NMN is best taken sublingually or underneath the tongue to dissolve and absorb into the blood, although I'm not sure if this is true, so I'd love to see future studies investigate this. I also hope future NMM studies will use this 1000 milligram dose taken at once, along with higher and lower doses to help us determine proper dosage. Finally, I hope future investigations will get at the molecular pathways behind the physiological changes observed here. If future studies consider all of these elements, then we will certainly have a better understanding of how NMN impacts humans. If you want to learn more about this study, then check out Lifespan.io's article by Greg Gillespie in the description, and we'll see you in the next video.